Hey guys! Today I am going to show you my watercolor painting supplies. Um, I've had quite a few people ask me about what kind of paper or brush I use, so I've decided to make this long time coming video to walk you through all of my watercolor supplies. First of all, papers. Even though I have done a lot of watercolor sketches on drawing paper, um, mainly to decorate my traveler's notebook, I would strongly suggest that you always paint on real watercolor paper so that you can start with good habits and get to experience the true power of watercolor. So these are the papers I currently use. They can be divided into cotton paper and cellulose paper. Now I don't usually care much about brands. I'm not you know, very picky when it comes to brands. Um, I think most well-known brands know how to make real watercolor paper. So what matters to me is more like texture, price, and of course, most importantly, how comfortable I am with them. So I have cotton paper of two brands here. Arsh, which actually comes from Canson, I believe. Um, and Kenson Moulin du Roi. The Arch paper is absolutely my favorite and most uh, frequently used paper. It has a rough texture. I'm not sure if it's showing on camera. So this allows the paper to absorb water very quickly. So you probably feel a bit dry when you're painting. Um, that's because the grainy surface kind of grabs onto the water and the pigment. So you lose paint faster when you do a wash. The Canson paper, however, is I would say a lot less rough and has a rather smooth surface. So you feel that your brushwork um, goes very smooth as well, but they both create you know, nice texture um, and they don't buckle very easily. So I can't really say which is better because it all depends on how you paint. Like when you're painting on different kinds of papers, um, you always have to adjust your approach, like for example, the amount of water you load in your brush. So that's really a personal preference. And um, cotton paper can usually hold the moisture for a very long time. So this gives you more time to do a wet on wet technique. The only problem with cotton paper is that it's usually very expensive. The other choice is cellulose paper. I have bought a few brands, Canson, which is the most common brand um, that you can find in art shops or stationery shops, and these are from De La Rowney. And the big one here is from Cultura. Uh, it's a French uh, art shop. It's kind of their store brand, so very cheap. I think probably half Canton's price. So I bought like a lot of them for um, practicing. Personally, I don't see a big difference among them, or maybe I'm just not, you know, sensitive enough to see. But even the Cultura store brand is not, you know, that different from Canton. Um, but then again, Canson paper is, I mean, it's only okay, it's really not that good, um, quality speaking. It can't always handle very heavy, uh, rework, and sometimes it can get fuzzy and tears easily. Which is the downside of cellulose paper. But, um, for simple practice and beginner's work, they are totally capable of doing the job. And these are the papers that I started out with. I began painting about three years ago. And I can tell you that in the first two years, I threw away so many paintings because I messed up all the time. 
So you do not want to do that with very expensive um, cotton watercolor paper. So let's take the uh, Canson paper for example. You can see that it's got light texture and is comparatively smooth, so easy to work with. I guess it's less intimidating to beginners, oh, beginner friendly if you will, because it requires less effort, if that makes sense. But sometimes the paint and the water doesn't settle in nicely as you want them to. So it could spread around a little bit. So that's something you kind of need to get used to. My feeling towards cellulose papers is pretty neutral. I mean, there's nothing really impressive about them, but they make nice practice paper because they're so much cheaper. I bought most of my paper in 300 gram per square meter, that is 140 pounds. Except for the paper I use to make my art journal, which is 200 gram. Um, 300 gram is the most common, you know, standard paper weight, and it's good for, you know, almost all kinds of paintings. Um, I haven't tried heavier paper yet, so I don't know much about them. About format, watercolor paper can come in sheets, pads, um, blocks, and rolls, etc. I usually get my papers in pads. Uh, it's very convenient for me. I can work on one sheet and take it off later. I can even cut it to smaller size if I want. I bought my arch paper in a block, which means they are glued together on all four sides. Um, this prevents the paper from buckling, especially, especially when you lay down a lot of water. And you can just cut it off later with a knife. When you finish, it's very easy to do that. So brushes. My brushes come in two kinds, the synthetic fiber and animal hair. I have about you know, 20 brushes in total, but in reality I only use a few of them. They come from Winsor Newton and um, Raphael, which is a very common French brand. And of course Cinelie. And this one is from Isabelle. Most of them are round brushes. So a round brush is like this. It has a belly to hold water and comes down to a fine point. It's very versatile. I, I would say it's the most versatile and practical brush of all. You can do most of the work with it. You can go from a fine line to a white stroke or brush by pressing hotter against the paper. So this is the kind of brush I use probably 90% of the time. I usually use uh, brushes from number 6, number 7, number... I can't find number 8, it's probably... I probably lost it again. But number 8, number 9, and um, number 10. So these are the most um, practical brushes for me. First time I went to the art shop to pick up brushes, I bought you know, from number 6 to number 10, and the rest are gifts from friends and families. And I have some very fine liners to do detail work, um, big brushes for a background wash, and then the flat brush to create some of the, uh, the shapes and effects. And of course I have the, um, you know, the, the brush that comes with a water tank, but um, for some reason, I just I just can't master it. Like I don't even I don't know how to paint with it, um, so I rarely use it. Maybe it's the way I'm, you know, I'm using it wrong or something. So synthetic brushes are normally cheaper and they are medium soft, while the animal hair brushes are usually softer and a bit more expensive. I can't really say which one is. You know, better than the other. Um, again, it depends on how you use it, you know, your habit, your painting habit. Um, I myself switch back and forth all the time depending on, you know, what I paint. Okay, paint. 
my very first watercolor is this Winsor & Newton travel box of 12 colors in pens. Um, you can see I don't usually clean my palette, so it's always pretty messy. Um, it's not the professional kind, it's actually cotton, it's not written here, but um, which I guess means it's student's quality paint. Um, it was good enough for me to start out with, and um, later on I purchased a bigger palette. It's the same, but it comes in 24 colors, I think. So the Windsor and Newton Cotton paint is quite good for beginners. It has a neutral hue, not too bright or too dull. It's actually suitable for many subjects. Um, one thing I don't like about uh, the Windsor and Newton paint is that it's very hard to pick up paint from the pens, especially with an, you know, like an animal hair brush and I've heard that it's a common problem of you know the Windsor and Newton paint I'm not sure if that's true you probably you probably won't have that problem with tubes and my second watercolor paint is the artist quality paint from Cinelie I have one set in tubes and the other in pens Um, some people prefer tubes because it's easier to cover big washes, but I tend to favor the pants more, simply because I'm too lazy to squeeze all the colors out one by one. Um, with pens, it's, you know, it's everybody's just out there and <laughs> so you don't have to prepare the paint. Um, also, I don't usually plan my paintings ahead, which is a bad example. Not happy with myself about that. Um, it's always better to plan ahead, during which stage you can make your color choices and have a preview of your painting. So because I don't do that, I don't you know, usually know what colors I'll be using before I start. So that's why I prefer the, uh, the pens, because... Um, I have all the choices laying right in front of me, so I don't have to worry about picking colors. Anyway, the Senele color is very luminous and vibrant, and it's got great transparency as well. Like a lot of artists' quality paint, the paint can sometimes spread and flows very easily, so it can be you know, sometimes a little hard to control for um, people that are not familiar with the artist quality paint, but that's also something you need to get used to. And of course, the artist quality paint is more expensive than the student's quality, but I think it lasts longer and won't fade as easily. So the newest addition to my watercolor family is this Van Gogh pocket box. I have done an unboxing video of it in which I did a color chart and a testing sketch. So I'm not going to go to details about it. I will uh, link the video down below if you're interested. So basically it's a very happy and vibrant palette. Um, really nice for a student's great paint. Okay, so that's all of my art supplies. Um, I hope my explanations are clear and that I didn't ramble too much because I tend to do that sometimes. Um, so if you have any questions or suggestions or any thoughts, you can just leave me comments. Um, you know, I always try my best to answer them. Okay, so that's it. I, I'm not going to make this video longer than it already is. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you very soon in my next one. Au revoir!